for the Liz McGuire show, which was called What's Lizzie Thinking at the time, I had taken a couple private acting uh, coaching sessions mm -hmm. for it. But I think the main thing was that I just didn't know how to pronounce uh, Gordon's name. <laughs> And I just didn't know how to read it off of paper correctly, so I pronounced it Gordon. <laughs> I thought he was Gordon. Gordo. Well, he, that's his like nickname. Oh. So like, but me as like Ethan, mm -hmm. like for like the, for the first episode that he shows up, mm -hmm. he wasn't like the hey guys, like fun, like silly, yeah, friendly first. guy. He was this kind of bully, angsty yeah. character rebel uh, that <laughs> would uh, call that. Uh, because his full name was, oh gosh, David Gordon mm -hmm. was his full character name. So I call him by his last name. Hey, Gordon mm -hmm. would be the thing. Mm -hmm. But I was like, what's up, Gordon? <laughs> and I don't know I don't know what that was, but I think that's that's actually what got me the part. Hey, man, they say, I remember yeah. in acting class, they used to say that um, uh, jobs are won in moments in your audition. Yeah. And it is. It's like what makes you stand out. And um, I seem to. Th I think that like your character was really interesting, believe it or not, because it was accidentally a three dimensional character. When you think, about it. <laughs> say more. I love. Say that. more. I love that you're laughing. Say more. So here's the thing. Like you could have played it just like you know, as one being a bully or being a dreamboat, but you kind of were like a synthesis of both of those things. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how much of that is, uh, you know, well. I don't know how much I made it that as opposed to where the writers just took it because mm -hmm. he ended up dropping the 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 tough boy thing. And mm -hmm. I don't know how many times they re-aired those episodes mm -hmm. uh, from earlier on as opposed to I like just replaying, that. you know, the ones where he's just like the heartthrob guy. Right, right. Because um, I think they, just, they thought that people liked that that version of Ethan. Just We're just going to lock this in. This is, this is who this guy is. Smart. Um, because there was another heartthrob on it. Danny Kessler uh, from yeah. like the first couple episodes that we just all of a sudden didn't, didn't see, see anymore. and it was just you and it's just me all of a sudden see? and my hair starts to get longer and it's like <laughs> I became Danny Kessler <laughs> it's really weird uh, but I'm not gonna be mad yeah yeah <laughs> well the other thing one. is his char your character was very like I I would say borderline like you said he was silly but like did you feel like you had to play into that like you were playing down your character because you're a very well-spoken, intelligent guy. And from what I remember from your character is like you're very loose, very chill, very like, you know, OC bro. I mean, I think most of most of a character is in the writing. Uh -huh. and so that that gives you a lot of ammunition. Got it. Um, and as you as you know, they the writers as a character is cast by a person mm -hmm. and they start to get familiar with what you look like, with what you bring to the character. Mm -hmm. They start seeing, okay, like what's popping and how can we have fun with this person? And mm -hmm. they start writing for the character, but also you, you as this character and can really play up like, okay, what would, what would be great for Clayton as Ethan to do mm -hmm. in this one or to say? And so sometimes it, it would just be right there and then, um, I'm not saying it's like, just just say the words and then <laughs> and then that's it. Um, have fun with Mad it, obviously. Tight. But they knew that I would have fun with it. I think right. was the point. Is that right. like, we all felt like we were working together? Well, like you and Jake on the bus, like having those two characters, like kind of have to talk to each other. Like yeah. that's a good example of like let's stir the let's stir the pot with the characters. Sure. And I think you have to get really creative when you're talking about um, how to utilize kid actors because sometimes they don't put everyone in one scene because you can't afford you have to like bank time and they, they have to be mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. thankfully jake was you know obviously professional mm -hmm. obviously a weird kid but obviously so, uh <laughs> still, still pretty you know, he'd done like some big projects going into Freaking that steven so like, spielberg movies yeah, and stuff yeah yeah, AI. yeah. totally yeah. wait okay so you're out of acting but then i got a call a couple years ago to be in some sort of a, it was like a, um, I want to say it was a YouTube series um, where you played the love interest. Do you know what I'm talking about? What was this? Yeah. You were in some show in, in some, like, um, you were in a movie where you played a love interest with a lady. <laughs> was it, it was a web series? Yes. I mean, I did it like a couple web series. If, yes, through, it was a web 20s. series, but it was like a sexy one. Sexy one. It was a sexy web series. It wasn't Mondays, was yeah, it? It was Mondays. It was Mondays? Mm -hmm. Hey. They, they asked me Shut to up. do something with them, and I don't think it worked out for my schedule, and I really wanted to because I wanted to work with you. Yeah. Yes. So shout out to Mondays. Oh, my gosh. But yes. so you got back into acting later. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because okay. so that was, that that was also part of the, the deal was that between those 
three things I touched on earlier, acting was a thing that I could return to. And you could argue that school could be something that you could come back to as well. Yeah. Um, I think I knew that I really enjoyed acting. Uh, but like that's something that you can do technically at any age, at any time. So the plan was to just focus on high school, go to college, and then we'll see from there. Mm. And uh, I ended up being a film studies major uh, at Pepperdine. And I thought, <laughs> which I thought was a degree that was going to be much more in like filmmaking and producing. Uh -huh. um, and ended up being a lot more theory uh, and film yes. criticism As and with, history. By the way, I have the same... Uh, same uh, degree. Oh, really? From Columbia. Okay. What the well, hell was I doing? I don't know. Me neither. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> and so there's a lot more book reading uh, and essay writing than I was anticipating. And but, watching movies. And watching movies. Mm -hmm. um, I saw Rear Window many times. I loved times. it. And yeah. lots of international films yes, that were yes, not in yes, English. Yes, yes, yeah. French, German, um, all that fun African, stuff. African, Nigerian uh -huh, ones. Uh -huh. all sorts of we things. didn't go enough into like 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 Africa or, you know, I'm sure we saw some, I always took it like specifically like a Japanese film class and that was awesome. That's so cool. Um, yeah. See, so you're passionate Kurosawa about films it. Oh my gosh. Kurosawa films are insane. awesome. Yeah. Uh, so there was that. And uh -huh. then I was <laughs> playing in a tournament just for fun after my senior season. And then I had a relationship with the national team, uh, head coach and assistant coach at the time. Mm -hmm. And they're like, Hey Clay, you know, you got, uh, you think you're a good player and you work really hard. Um, you're not there yet, but if you continue to develop, then you might have a shot on making the national team. And I was like, oh boy, I can't, uh, like, what do I do with that information? And so all of a sudden I started thinking about that and being like, oh man, what is the, this is what's guided a lot of my decisions. The like, triangle? What am I going to be like thinking about when I'm older, looking back on, am I going to regret not going for certain things like not doing the movie or not. So I decided like, I, I would have maybe regretted not doing the movie. So I did the movie and it, to hear that I would have maybe a shot at making the Olympics in water polo was very, um, I never thought about doing that on my own. Like that wasn't my dream as a kid. I just thought I was going to play my hardest like through college and like, and that'd be it. And I probably wouldn't play the sport ever again. And uh, I knew that there were a lot of people out there this is something about me that would die for the national team head coach to tell them that and to be able to have the opportunity to even pursue that path. But the only way to really like develop post-college is you got to find a, a pro team to play for in Europe. So I was training with the national team uh, here in the States that summer and then found myself playing for a team in Italy for a season and then in Hungary. You went back to Italy. I went back to Italy. Is that what dreams are made of? <laughs> I know? had to do it. How'd you know? I had to say it. Yeah, yeah. But do you ever get recognized in Italy? I did. <laughs> oh, did you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. When when we were filming the movie and we were, I was in a hotel in Rome, I saw myself on TV. Okay. Speaking Italian. It is speaking Italian. Yeah. That's so Wild. funny. Very did strange. you learn Italian when you went back? Uh, I actually nearly minored in Italian at Pepperdine. That's cool. Yeah, because because during the filming of the movie, filming in Italy, I actually have distant cousins that are in Italy. It was my my mom's side, so my your mom's Italian. Uh, partly, my okay. mom's mom's parents immigrated to the states from Italy, um, the northern your part. Your great grandparents. By, yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's another way of saying it. <laughs> 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 from from uh, Lake Como, uh -huh. uh, this little place called Sorico, mm -hmm. and we, our families were barely connected at that point. So doing the movie, I was not on set. <laughs> I was not being required to film a whole ton. Right. So being a minor, my parents were with me, or at least my mom was, and my dad was visiting, and we decided to go up and reunite with that side of the family. And there was one woman that spoke some English that took us around to meet everybody, and they have some farmland there, and um, went different places. And then That's at cool. the very end of the weekend, she says, Clayton, you must learn Italian. And so I was like, okay. So when I was going into Pepperdine, you can opt into a language. And I had done AP Spanish at that time. And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, I'm going to learn Italian. So yeah. I started from the ground up. And But because I had the background of Spanish, which very much mm -hmm. applies, which wiped out all of my Spanish. I'm sure it did. Uh, <laughs> that makes sense. But, you know, and then that, that uh, I can speak some Italian now. That's so cool. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. You're a paisan. Because I'm Romano. Got it. Italian. Okay. I got it. Got it. I'm Calabrian, Cal Calabri Calabrian, and um, 
or Calabrese, I think they call it. Calabrese and Sicilian. Ah, Calabrese. Yeah, Calabrese. You would know. Thanks so much for checking out this clip for the Vulnerable Podcast. For the full episode, go ahead and check out my YouTube channel. That link is in the description. Thanks again.